25 years ago, Bill Jones began searching for a career that would bear the parental seal of approval. My father did his best to talk me into being a chef. Found some purple ones over here. Because of the hours, because you work every holiday. Instead, this Cowichan Valley forager chose geology. Here's a beautiful one. I had a fabulous rock collection. Here's one over here, Bill. The learning experience was fantastic. This one is from a family called the Rossila family. It taught me to learn for the rest of my life. And what he learned was that the gems he hunted were not in the rocks, but rather what grew beside them. To many other chefs, I'm a chef living the dream. That's a very common mushroom around here. It's called the lobster mushroom. My goal was not really to be a chef, but to be a cookbook author. Geology was just a flash in the pan. I love food, I love cooking. Now, a chef like his dad, and 12 books later, this author has made his parents proud. His latest book, From Foraging to Feasting, is a mushroom menagerie. If you want to start mushroom foraging, it's one of the best places on the planet. But what makes mushrooms magnificent is that foraging for fungi is good for you. It's not just about treasure. You're in the woods, uh, you're enjoying nature, fresh air, and at the same time you're finding these little nuggets of, of nutrition. In addition to the exercise, fungi are bursting with vitamins and minerals. Like the urban peasant used to say, mushrooms make meals marvelous. But a simple pan fry makes these chanterelles magnificent on their own. High heat, get rid of the moisture, brown the edges, add your seasonings, done. That's it. It makes food come alive. The flavors are very earthy. There's lots of what the Japanese call umami. It's naturally occurring in mushrooms, so it's a chemical that gives your brain pleasure. That's great, Bill. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Mushrooms are part of the fungus kingdom. When you're picking the mushroom, you're picking the fruit off that organism. That's a beauty. Every bit as delectable as those hanging from trees. Spice. Spicy, earthy. Intoxicating. You really got to know your mushrooms, then. Yeah, there's, like I said, 10,000 different types. And, uh, and the ones that we really pick for the pot is about 40. So that leaves a lot. <laughs> that you don't want to pick. When Bill's not foraging for or writing about food, he's teaching others how to cook it, find it, and identify it. This is one of the prized mushrooms for the, the forager. It's a porcini. So what about this one, Bill? Yeah, that uh, looks like a lepiota, which is one of the ones that uh, causes some problems for people. Bill says a small number of mushrooms are poisonous, others hallucinogenic and a few are lethal. Uh, one of the ways you can really distinctively tell if it's a chanterelle or not is you take the mushroom and you split it apart and it breaks into tiny shreds and it's not hollow. So those are the two things that distinguish it from a false chanterelle. Bill suggests learning from an experienced forager before you go hunting on your own, but be aware. The big danger in foraging is not the mushrooms, it's the forest itself. A simple injury from a fall can become life-threatening and it's easy to get lost on the hunt. You're staring down going, there's one, there's another one, there's another one, and you look up and go, where am I? So tell someone where you're going. Bring a map, compass, and a GPS if possible. As the days grow shorter, the mushrooms around the woodlot grow thicker. Bill says the fungi forage lasts right through until spring. Thanks to his father's influence, Bill's living the dream. He said, you know, do something different, but he taught me the skills. Making this chef, teacher, and writer the envy of the culinary world. Foraging in the Cowichan Valley, I'm Paul Beilstein.